Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. My name is Sandra Staub and in this video I am going to show you how to create a logo which will be printed on a candle. Specifically, what we're doing today is designing a logo for a mind and heart collection that I am doing together with Joel Fantoli. And I would like to use this illustration of a Hamza hand that I already created for the sticker sheet. So let's get started. I am now in Vectornator and I am going to create a fresh canvas for the logo that is going to be applied to the candle jar. So naturally I want the size of the canvas to match the size of my product. But let me show you the candle very quickly so you can know what I have in mind. This is the candle that I selected together with Joel, And I am going to design a logo that fits in the center here. And I know that the size of the candle is 9 cm high. So back in Vectornator, I am preparing my file accordingly. I'm renaming the new custom size that I'm creating. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you know that I like to stay neat and organized. And then I am changing the unit of measurement to centimeters so that I can create a canvas that is nine by nine. Okay, now we can begin with the fun part. Since I already drew the hand previously, I'm just going to bring it into my new document. But before that, I'm setting up my background layer because I don't like working with the transparent background. Let's create another layer and copy my Hamza hand design from my sticker sheet file and paste it here. I copied it in parts, hence the need to realign these two objects again here. I'll definitely want to make the graphic bigger. So be sure to do that while holding down one finger on canvas so the aspect ratio is preserved. All right, so I know that I want to add some text on the side, specifically the name of the collection. I have a rough idea in my head and we'll see how we get there. I want the text and any additional graphics to go around my focal point. I have prepared a sketch and you'll notice that I am changing a few things about the design as the tutorial progresses. But I wanted you guys to see that a creative process is definitely not linear and you should always be open to making changes as you go. Just go with the flow. First, I'm going to change the aesthetics here by only using the outline of the hand. So I will turn fill off, turn stroke on and give it a deep navy color. I'm not actually designing a black and white logo, which is something that I usually do when I'm working with client. For personal projects, I use my go-to color palette. From here, I'm making the stroke more visible and I make sure that my path have rounded shape. It just seems to fit better with my illustration. Then I am going to do the same for the floral pattern. Okay, from this point, I personally feel that there is more white space in this area at the bottom. So the line visually seems a bit thinner than the contour of the leaves. For this reason, I'm going to make this line a bit more prominent. It is only 0.1 points thicker, but the devil is in the details. Then I am adding the lines that separate each finger, making sure that they're perfectly aligned with the other paths in my design. After that, I'm going to perfect the leaves where I think they should look a bit better. Remember, the node tool is vital for refining these small details in your illustration. I'm happy with the look of the hand, so now it's time for the typographical composition. The name of my collection is Mind and Heart, as you already know. So I'm going to write one word on each side and play around with fonts, alignment and orientation. I definitely want the text to be all caps and I want it bigger. Of course, I'll also color it dark blue to match the hand. And I've got a typeface in mind. It's called Wichita. And finally, I'm going to change the way my letters are distributed. 
The reason I chose Wichita as my font is because all letters have the exact same width and I think this quality is going to add to my design. I am then just going to copy this actually and place it on the opposite side and rewrite the word. Next, I want to create the shape that goes around the hand and connects the two texts. I'm going to pick the rectangle tool here and then I change the corner radius to 200. It looks like what I had in mind, so let's keep it. Just like before, I'm turning fill off and turning stroke on to transform this into an outline. And now let's make all the alignments. I'm adding some guides by dragging my pencil along the ruler, which divides the artwork in four equal parts. This will help me place all the elements correctly. Alright, after a few more adjustments, I think that I'm going to write the text in the classic way. But then I'm going to rotate it along the oval path. And then I'm doing the same on the other side. Time to focus on the tracking of my text, a super important aspect of typography and logo design. If you're not familiar with the concept, tracking refers to the optical spacing between all letters of a word. So if I increase the values of my tracking slider here, the text will look more spaced out exactly what I was looking for. Here I've actually decided to add even more negative space between my letters. And I'm going to show you another way to do it. It's kind of like cheating, but I add a space between each letter to create even more room in between my characters. And with that, I'm finished with this part of the design. Looking at my composition, I notice that the texts are not at the same height. So to align them properly, I'm adding a few more guides. Okay, I quite like this. Now I'm going to remove the lines that go through the text using the scissors tool. With the tool selected, Tap the area alongside the path you want to remove. Press delete and repeat. Using my trusty guides again, I am checking on the alignments of my cuts. And then I cut anything that's beyond the guide. Symmetry is super important in this particular design and just in general for me. Also, considering it's the logo of the series and it's going to be printed on different products, you'll definitely want this to be as perfect as it can be. I played around a little bit more with the layout, nothing major, and I think you can tell from the video what adjustments I made. And finally, last step, I'm adding two circles in dusty pink, my trademark color, just to add a little something extra to the composition. Now that my design is done, I'm scaling it and adding it to my candle mock-up so I can visualize the final product better. Alright, this is the preview of the candle. I'm very happy with how the logo works and I feel that all the elements fit very nicely together. And this is how the candle turned out. I'm super excited to see that my logo has come to life and the candle smells so nice. This is my first time doing a project like this and I honestly enjoyed every second of it. The candles will be available on my shop or through my Instagram, so be sure to check them out. Let us know in the comments below if this tutorial helped you in your own project. Joel Fantoli and I are adding even more items to our collection this year and we are documenting the process with Vectornator. So stay tuned for those videos. See you then! Bye!